Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Have you ever wanted to be able to create 3D scans but don't have a thousand or three thousand pound budget to be able to buy a 3D scanner? Well, good news! Using Matterport and a standard 360 camera such as the Insta360 ONE X or the Ricoch Feta and an iPad or an iOS device, we can capture a phototelemetry 3D model quite simply. So all I've done is I'm just going to connect using my iPad to the 360 camera. So in this case, it's the Insta One X or the Insta One X 360, like so. And with my iPad or iOS device now connected to my 360 camera, I simply need to boot up the Matterport Capture application. So what I've done is I made sure that my camera is kept at the sort of eye level height to the user in a small space because this can only be done inside. So I'm just going to boot up the capture application in a second and making sure that obviously everything is clean and set up as how I want it. And the advantage of doing it this way is we'll be having 360 photos captured and it'll be trying to interpret a 3D model for us. So I'm just making sure I've signed into the application and my camera is connected. So I'm using the free plan, which means I can upload one free 3D model to the Matterport servers. And as you can see, my camera is connected below. And I've just made sure I've followed the instruction connection devices uh, guidelines through the application. So now I simply hit the little plus button and I need to enter some information on what my free or 360 scan will be. So in this case, it's the ATB edit suites, which is the room I was in when I did this. I simply make sure the camera is set up where I want it to be at eye level on a monopod. And I just simply hit capture 3D scan. And in a matter of moments, uh, making sure that I'm out of frame, because again, I don't want to be in this 3D scan and I can't change anything that's in that space. So if you've got anything that's moving in that space, make sure it's not there. And also being aware of any reflective surfaces because we'll need to tell the software where those are in a bit. So now I've got my first scan done. You'll see it's created this sort of photo telemetry 3D uh, sort of top down view. So number one is where our first scan is done. And I know for a fact that where this is located, that there is a reflective surface right behind it, which in this case is the TV. So I simply go down to my little toolbar uh, menu down in the bottom corner, indicated by the two dots joined line. And I simply select the little reflective surface icon. I make sure this is matched to the size of what my reflective surface would be. So that would be either a window or a mirror, or in this case, a TV screen. Making sure that the reflective surface is pointing into the space that I want to be captured. So now I've got that in there, I'm gonna pinch to zoom back out. I can close my little toolbar out being aware that I can actually come back into this later on and remove sections I don't want or adding in extra details that I see fit. And I'm going to make sure I move my camera about three to four meters maximum away from my original point. I try and go a bit less than that, so I aim for about two meters. And I just simply press to capture my new scan. And this should now create our second capture point. Now, if I was working in a slightly bigger space than this, I would want to circulate the room on the edges first, working my way into the middle. Bear in mind again, like I sort of said, that this process using a 360 camera in comparison to using a 3D scanner has its limitations. And we don't want to have too many scanned data interpretations in there because it will start to throw a wobbly. So if we see here, we can see that the blue carpet actually isn't quite lined up correctly. So it is actually having trouble matching up our free, uh, telemetry data. It's something we'll come back to later on. So I'm just going to go and move it again a couple of meters further into the room 
just to get the back wall of this room. And any area that, that is black is what well, hasn't been picked up. So that's area where it, it can't interpret depth or is, isn't visible within that scan. And a way to fix that is to just simply capture more information in that space by moving and capturing more scan data. But again, in this sort of room, that's quite tricky. Any object that's quite thin, I also have an issue with. So I've just moved further into the room, as you can see. So this is mapping the room fairly accurate to the space it actually is in. And as you see, two and three, actually, the carpet lines up much better as it's actually got more details to work with. Now, the reason we may have had issues with the first scan is it may have had issues with the reflective surface at the beginning. So we may actually go back and fix that by removing that scan data point and redoing it. So I'm just going to do my final scan at the back wall corner just to tighten up that edge. Again, making sure that I'm not in any of these shots. So every time there's a gap, it's basically I'm moving out of the way, hiding around a wall or a pillar. So now I have my four scans for my room, which would be sufficiently enough for this. I can simply tap on any of these points and enlarge it to see a 360 photo of that space. So it's capturing the photo data as well, obviously. And that would be what how we can navigate through using these sort of photo points as our hotspots to navigate through our room. If I don't want this scan, I can just simply click on it and I could delete the first scan, which is what I'm going to do. Um, it'll ask me if I want to confirm that. I do. And it gives me a warning about some orphan scan data, which in this case I'm aware of. So I'm just going to simply redo my first scan, but a little bit further away from the mirror this time and see if that fixes it. If not, doesn't really matter too much for the purposes of this demonstration. But trying to prepare the room and being aware of the space you're in beforehand is super critical to doing it this way. Now, if you wanted to download this data, you'd have to obviously pay for it or have a subscription. Uh, as you see, that scan didn't work out, so I've just deleted it and I'm just gonna have to work with the free scans I've got, which are sufficient for this. Now I would simply add in any extra points. So if I wanted to cut anything out, I could use a little scissor tool to remove anything. So let's say I wanted to remove this wall here for whatever reason. I could make sure that anything past that wall, that line is removed. So if I had some light le um, 3D scan data leaking through a doorway, for example, I would simply add my remove line to that surface there just to remove it. And then I would, when I've finished with my room, I would then click on the little cloud icon in the top corner to upload it to my account. Now, bear in mind I'm on a free plan and I've already uploaded one, so I can't actually utilize this scan. Um, and if I wanted to actually use this 3D model and refine it, I would have to pay on top of the subscription model pricing for Matterport. Anyway, so that's just been a very quick overview of how to using photo telemetry in a 360 camera and a Matterport application on an iOS device, create a very somewhat dirty 3D model. Thank you for watching.